bringing us to the new year. Today is the first of Muharram. As uh, we completed the 30 days of the Hijjah yesterday, which makes today the first of Muharram. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this Surah uh, al that we just prayed, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He swore by this day, or this, this Salat, this Salat in particular, in the Quran, when Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, what fetch? I swear by the fetch. Qatada ibn Du'ama al Sidusi, rahimahullah, who was the famous scholar of Basra from the students of Anas ibn Malik. Qatada said that Allah, that the Fajr that Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by in this ayah is the Salat al Fajr on the first of Muharram. He said, Minha ten Fajru Jamia Sen. He said, From this Salat comes the rest of the year. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by this Salat to show the magnitude and the importance of this salah. This, this, from this point, is will set the tone for the rest of the year. And alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to be able to establish the salah in Jama'ah as our first act of worship performed in this year. It's done in the congregation in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we hope that this is a bushra from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that shows us the progress or the goodness that inshallah we will be upon for the year 1446. As I was encouraging last week or the other few couple of days ago that we have to rise, and we have to raise our standards. We cannot just settle for mediocrity. We cannot allow for 1446 to be just like 1445, which was just like 1444 and just like 1443. We have to raise our, we have to raise our level. We have to raise our level in, in everything but especially in our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last night, we talked about the importance of knowledge and why the pathway to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can only be found through knowledge. <coughs> I mentioned another verse, I'll mention another verse from the Quran where Allah ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ Only the people who have knowledge Fear Allah. Only the people who have knowledge fear Allah. So, what that means is the more knowledge that we have, the more we are able to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the less knowledge that we have, the less we're, we are able to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who know, they're not like those who don't know. As Allah Ta'ala says, Say, are those who know like those who do not know? And so I encourage myself and I encourage us as a community to raise our standards, raise our levels. Let us raise our levels of knowledge. Let us start to talk to one another about knowledge, question one another about knowledge, not to belittle someone, but just as a means of encouragement. Say, what, what have you memorized new this, this week? Have you memorized any verses this week? What, what new tafsir have you, have you understood? What books, what books have you read from cover to cover? And this is a, a, another thing, inshallah, I want to uh, point out the importance of building your personal library. In your home, in your home, in a common area where you and your family, your wife, your children can easily access, there should be books. The books that teach the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the books of tafsir, tafsir al-Quran, 
books of the ahadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as this is the true knowledge that's going to help us become connected. We want our children to be connected to Allah and give them books that will teach them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want our wives to be honoring uh, us, honoring our households, and give them books that will teach them about the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Edu let's educate ourselves. Let's educate our families. It's not enough for us to be in darkness. I should not be able to say, uh, <coughs> brothers, tell me a verse from the Quran that prohibits the worship of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should not be able to say that, except that every single one of us throws their hand in the air and everybody can quote a different verse from the Quran. We all should be able to do that, not just the who, those who are, we say, oh, this is a scholar, we should be able to say, oh, we have our Sheikh Mahir here, Hafiz al Quran, let him answer for us. He said, well, on the day of judgment, our brother Mahir is not going to be able to answer for us. No one's going to be able to answer for us. We have to be able to have the answers ourselves. And so when it comes to the basics, I'm not talking about the intricate details of an if or inheritance or you know the base you know the, the intricate details of, of specific knowledge. I'm saying the basic details of Al Islam, like who is Allah? Right? Just who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what is his right over us? That's a that's a basic question that every single Muslim should be able to answer. Every one of us should be able to answer. Those who are scholarly from amongst us and those who are not scholarly from amongst us. And so I encourage myself once again, encourage us all to gain knowledge, to raise our standards, let us start to read, let us start to engage in conversations that will build our knowledge, build ourselves. Let us start to sit with people who are more learned than us and start to engage with them so that we can see what they have learned over the years that we can benefit. Let us start to uh, hold ourselves to this higher, higher standard. And when we hear Imam or Shaykh or teacher say this is halal and this is haram, why don't we just, all we have to do in order to help ourselves, in order just to help ourselves and increase our knowledge Say, excuse me, Shaykh, excuse me, teacher, excuse me, uh, man, you, you, you said this, um, that's halal or that's haram. Just help me with the knowledge of that. Where did you get that from? Where did you learn that from? Just that question in and of itself, when we start to get ourselves used to asking that, where did that come from? What is the knowledge that this is based on? This in and of itself will begin to start to build our, our, our knowledge base. And so, then, which will help us become people who are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on knowledge, which will make us those who fear Allah, which will make us amongst those people who are on the pathway to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us, and Allah ta'ala bless us. Ask Allah to accept from us our good deeds and our righteous actions to be able to look our faults and forgive us of our sins. Uh, we have an announcement in reference to uh, the Salat. Uh, the Salat, Salat al Fajr starting tomorrow was today. Sunday? Yes. Starting tomorrow, Salat al Fajr is going to be at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. I will make the announcement about Isha tonight, inshallah. Time. The reason why I do that is because the, the, the last time I made the announcement about Isha at Fajr time, there were people who came to me and said, you said that Isha was such and such a time. I said, no, I meant for the next day. So we're gonna delay the announcement about <coughs> Isha. We'll announce that tonight, inshallah. But starting tomorrow, so after Fajr will be 5 a.m. And just as a side note, really quick, inshallah, 
as I mentioned, I mentioned this the other day, it shows us the, 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 that the Salat al-Fajr is becoming later, which means the longer days of the year have, I mean, they're behind us. Those long days, those are behind us now. So the days are getting shorter, which means that fasting is going to become easier. So let us take advantage of the easier days of fasting and let us fast these days for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to accept it from us all. Jazakum.